before Gary, what what were you actually doing? I mean, musically wise. Um, before Gary, I had been uh, I'd been doing jingles sessions, um, but only only at one studio. It was at a studio called Logarithm Studio in in. Um, Soho in London, in central London, and I'd been doing a lot of jingles for TV and radio. Um, and I also, I got, I got a producer called, um, called Doug Taylor, who was blind actually, right. which is a coincidence because my husband's nigh on blind. Right. I seem to be attracted to blind people. <laughs> um, but I got signed to, to Doug to um, record, and we re I recorded under the name Yuka, um, and I had a couple of singles. It was, it was one of those situations where right thing was happening, but it was uh, the wrong time. I was, we signed to Cheapskate Records, which was Chaz Chandler's label. Mm. And um, the first single came out, which was called Who Would Believe the Young Man? And it was very, kind of um, off, off the wall, uh, uh, not your normal pop song. And, um, and and we thought that we were gonna, you know, uh, get somewhere with that, but this, this, just after it was released, Chaz um, did a deal with another bigger company, um, a, a licensing deal. And um, what we had done, and my single kind of got left behind. <laughs> and um, that, that was it. The second single came out, um, oh God, which was called, uh, it, was to, it was Wales singing, and now I can't remember the name of my own song. <laughs> I told you, I told you I had the worst memory. You did. Um, and so then I went on to do uh, uh, jingles at, at Logarithm Studio. And somehow or another, uh, I got introduced to um, a, a management agency, um, Olaf Wiper, his name was, right. and his wife. <clears throat> and through them, although I can't remember how it all happened, I got a few opportunities. Um, I also um, auditioned for, um, oh gosh, and another big pop, and I keep thinking Shannon R, but it wasn't. Um, it was in English, not Duran Duran, mm. one that was Spandau Ballet. Oh, right. Okay, okay. The, the brain does pull it out in the end. <laughs> um, so, yes, uh, I auditioned with them, but with, with another singer, another mm. girl. We were there as a duo because they were looking to do a world tour, but they wanted two girls. And um, and, and, and it was a good experience, but um, I think the girl and I had never met. Right. <laughs> so when we went to do the audition, even though we'd been in, in like a, in, in a room and sung a little bit together, um, to, just to, to see, uh, it really wasn't ideal. No. The girls that got it had been working together a lot, you know, and they were really, really in, in, in tune with it with each other as it were as people you know and as artists so and, and then came along the Gary Newman opportunity mm -hmm. so how did that come about Bob you're not going to tell me anything what was that I said I was then about to say how did that come about but you were then going to tell me anyway so that, yeah sorry that's okay um well I think I don't remember auditioning mm. uh, I think I must have. Uh, we went, I would have gone, I went out to Gary's house. Um, or was it to the, to the big studio um, at Shepparton? I think yeah. that was. Um, and met everybody and met Gary. And before I knew it, um, I, I was doing, doing the tour. Now, it was quite a challenge for me because... We were touring that album, mm. Berserker, um, and Tessa Niles had done all the vocals on the album. And I mean, she's like 
the cream of the crop of session singers. It, you know, at that point in time, um, really, you, you, you know, she was the, the one everybody wanted. Mm. Sting and Police and, and, and Pink Floyd, anybody. They mm. all wanted. She's good, really good. And on that first tour for Circa, I was on my own and we had to work out <clears throat> a way for me to do the vocal, the backing vocal, as convincingly as possible um, with one voice rather than a whole myriad of, of tracks. And some, some of the time we did have tracks because, of course, we used tracks in, in and out of the set. Yeah. Um, to, to bolster it up, you know, to make it sound a little bit fuller. Um, but yeah, it was quite quite a challenge because she's got a great range. She's wonderful, wonderful singer. So yeah, I, I took on the challenge then. <laughs> because yours, yours was actually the first voice you heard on the tour because it was the first song, wasn't it? Yes. Oh my God. I So when you asked me to to do this I did look up some YouTube stuff to remind me which tour was which because I later did the Fury tour and I, I couldn't remember which way round it was and of course the Fury tour was the next year and then yeah. I had hit Rolf with me so you know it was nice to have another another lady there another girl and we were girls really yeah. well I don't, well yeah I, I was 31, you know. <laughs> I was 31 when I did that. Really? Uh, I really wasn't a girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, yes, we, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah. Um, yeah, I did. I looked up on YouTube some, some of the stuff and I found um, some stuff from the Berserker tour. Um, and it reminded me yeah. that the, the live album was done, recorded at the Hammersmith Odeon. Indeed, yeah. Am I right? Yeah. And um, I watched it today. <clears throat> when, I, when the music started that night, mm. I had no monitor. <laughs> oh, dear. So I'm up at the back. Mm. And it's loud. It's really, the band is really loud. And there's smoke. Yeah. Pretend, pretend smoke. So we start, and I know I'm going to have to come in on my own because I'm counting because there's a track, some part of the track, and, the, you know, there's a counting work. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I, I cannot hear a single thing I am saying, singing, oh. and I knew I would be able to. So um, <clears throat> that was pretty terrifying. And and I remember that my 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 friends were in the audience on the top um, on the top of the um, Hammersmith Odeon, and my future husband at the time, who is no more, my, new, my husband, but he was there. And all I could think was, oh my god. So this is the first time they've come to see me do this tour. Yeah. And uh, not only that, they're recording it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I can't hear myself. And I couldn't hear myself for the first half of that opening song. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah. it's, it's just, you know, you have to deal with these things. Well. Because... Not only could I, I, I couldn't hear anything because the band was really loud, but I couldn't see anybody. I was, <laughs> if you watch the YouTube, mm. you see looking to the left a lot. Right. That's because I'm trying to spot somebody on the side to tell them that I can't hear, that I've got no monitor. And also I noticed on the video, on the YouTube video, you just catch me looking down, uh, bending down towards the monitor. Mm -hmm. And I get up again. And that's because I'm trying to see if there's anything coming through the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> see, it seems to be quite a, a, a thing. I, I don't suppose it's just 
Gary's band. I know Chris Payne said he's had the same problem, and he's just watched Cedric or something, you know, to sort of yeah try and keep up with him or yeah. Oh, you you know, stuff happens. It's life. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you have to you have to deal with it. So what it on? I'm trying to think. It must have been the Berserker. Was it Berserker when the lights used to come right down at the end? Mm -hmm. And I think Andy Copland was telling me one of the stage guys was climbing around there with just a cape on, but nothing else. Okay, I think now. Now Chris might remember the venue, but I think it was the last gig, and it might have been Manchester. I don't know if the tour ended in Manchester, but I'm pretty certain it was the final gig. Mm. And they kept the surprise. And I I think that was the Fury. Was that the Fury tour or the Berserker? I think actually it's the Fury. Did we, it was the Fury. Did we, it was the Fury tour yeah. because it was the what? three and, and they came down like this. Yeah. And there was one in the middle, of course. And they were big. They were, I suppose, you know, if, if I stretch my arms right out, they were big squares. I know, I saw that was there, yeah. That big. So, <laughs> Kit and I are there waiting, watching them start to come down. And we're actually counting because there's a little bit of track that we have to listen for, a yeah. little bit of, um, you know, sort of drums or something that we're, that we're counting on. And, as it comes down, we look, and there's one of the crew is attached or climbing on the back of it, so nobody in the audience could see yeah. except us. And the, and the rascals, they all knew that, <laughs> that it would be us that would spot him first. So he comes down, and I don't know if he had a cape or a coat, <laughs> but he had nothing else on. <laughs> And everybody else knew this was going to happen at certain it. And we forgot to count. <laughs> came in wrong. We came in at the wrong time. Everything was out of time because we were a little bit shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. To say the least. Well, Gary thought it was hilarious, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, because... um, yeah, they were rascals. Because Berserk was quite a long tour, wasn't it? It was um, something like 19 nights, wasn't it? I can't, yeah, I can't yeah. remember. It was quite... Um, Fury wasn't far behind, actually. It was only uh, no. 17. So... No, did you... How... You know... Did you find a big difference between the two? Two, two tours? Chris is now joining us. Oh, good. Somewhere. I don't know where yet, though. Hey! Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear us? Hello! Hello! Oh, hello. There. There hello. He is. I'm here. Aaron! <laughs> Chris! How are you? How are you, my dear? How are you, my darling? <laughs> you know we're both Cornish, Stephen. Yes, I do. Yeah. I do. I, 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 I read that. Are you ready? <laughs> It's we, like an out-of-body experience, Chris. <laughs> it is. It's been what now? What, 30? 37 know. years. 37 years. Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously you've changed, but I recognise you. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hair's gone a bit grey. <laughs> oh, you're looking good. Well, my hair's gone a bit... Oh, I'm hiding my hair. Well, let's, not, let's not talk about hair. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <No, great. laughs> Poor Stephen, he hasn't yeah. got it. <laughs> Sorry, I was probably rudely interrupting something. So you no, we we were just reminiscing on Berserker. Um, no, the Fury. Ah, right. Um, cool. where, yeah. where, where Karen was, um, someone decided to expose ourselves in the rigging. <laughs> I don't. I missed that one. <laughs> oh, don't you remember that? That was on the last, the last night of the tour. Right. Carol. And when when the um when the column came down in front of us, because Kit and I were up on the back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You were to my right. I think. That's it. Yeah. 
with John. Yeah. And uh, as the column came down, somebody was on the back of it, naked. Oh gosh, that would have, that would have been Shanks. Had to be oh. Shanks. Do you remember <laughs> Shanks's bar? When we went down to the lift every yes. night, there was yes. all Shanks and ro this roadie and, and, and put all these optics up and we were having a drink before the, during, between the end of the show and the encores. It had to be Shanks. It had to be a naked Shanks. It, only he could do that. <laughs> oh my God. And, 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 and me and Kit were, were, ca were counting to come in and went wrong and it all went wrong. I don't know how we got out of it, but everybody thought it was hilarious because everybody knew, except me and Kit, <laughs> that it was going to happen. I don't remember. I was, obviously, I, I was taking my synthesizer playing very seriously. Oh, you, yes, yes. yes. Thank you, terribly seriously. I don't remember that. I, I kind of have a vague memory of it, but I, I kind of missed it. Maybe I was at the wrong angle, and to be honest with you, I'm kind of glad I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what? So, what did you ask me, Stephen? You asked me something, and I can't remember what uh, it was. I, I was going to ask the, the difference between the two tours, the Berserker and the Fury tour. Uh, well, the, the, main, the main thing was I had another singer with me. Mm. Um, and that was, that was quite nice because, I mean, apart from the fact that she's a great singer, it was nice to have another girl on, on the road, um, on the bus and everything, you know. Um, there was a, a little bit more company for me. I mean, on, on the first tour, my main company was Beryl, um, Gary's mum, of course, because yeah. she was the only other woman on the tour. Um, so that, that was the main thing. Other than, other than that, I can't think of anything that was different. Can you, Chris? Well, no, of course, we completely ignored you on the first tour. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, I get that. I, actually, we all felt sorry for you because you were the sort of lone backing singer right in the middle of the set and uh, up on the podium and kind of exposed there. And uh, yeah. uh, it did look great, actually. It worked really, really well. But it must have been quite, um, it must have been quite daunting for you. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, um, I, I actually thought this is a personal opinion, but I thought the Fury set was a lot better. And yes. then the kit there with you as well. You with your red hair, kit with her blonde hair. And, and, uh, exactly. It, it was. It looked amazing. Really yeah. amazing. Us with a white suit. So me with a red tie tied around my head. I don't know why. That's it. It. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was. It was visually, I think, a better show. Um, but that's not. Yeah. That's not to take anything away from you when you played. Um, when you sang with us with Berserker. But it was a different thing. You know, you were on your yeah. own. You know. And uh, I still seem to remember we had a laugh. So of course, all we all I would have talk, talked about with you is would be would have been about Cornwall, <laughs> 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 yeah, about Mount Spain, Penzance, and Mausel. Because <laughs> you're from yeah. the you're from more up country bit, aren't you? What is it? Uh, where are you from again? I've forgotten. So, well, I was born in St Moors. St Moors, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, not too far away. Yeah. Is that up country? That's up right. country. well any. Anything, anything north of Penzance is up country. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah. Wasn't no, it, I mean, what was nice about that first tour was that you guys did look after me. Mm. And uh, if we went out anywhere after the show, yeah, I always felt that, you know, you were like my big brothers were all taking care of me. That didn't last for long because um, as I've already said to Stephen, I was trying to reproduce Tessa Niles's vocals, yeah. and there was a lot of range yeah. in in the vocals. And I quickly discovered that if I didn't finish the gig and go to bed pretty quickly and get some sleep and some rest, uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't hit the damn notes. <laughs> <laughs> So I had to stop going out partying with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, we didn't. Miss exactly. you. <laughs> I, I, I do believe Andy's joined us somewhere. Yeah. Is he? Oh, brilliant! Hi, Andy. I can't see him. I see a, a waving hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about it at the moment. But wasn't the Fury tour? That was the album, which hadn't been released before the tour had 
I think I think the album came out halfway through the tour. That was 1985, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think you could be right. Yeah, I believe so. The tour, where's Andy gone? The tour had started, but um, the actual album wasn't out as such. I'm, I'm now looking at the playlist, actually. It was quite, um, quite a good one, actually. Where's, where, where'd he go? Hello. Oh, there he is. Hello. 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 <laughs> Look at you. Long time no see. Hi, Andy. Are we doing all right? Doing great. I said to Chris, it's like it's like an out of body experience, don't you think? <laughs> oh, flipping heck, it is, yeah. Thirty-seven yeah. years. What? Thirty-seven. Oh years. my God! <laughs> is it really flipping heck? Flipping heck. <laughs> oh my word, that's a long time. How are you doing? Are you all right? I'm absolutely great, thanks. I'm in Spain. Are you? Is that where yeah. you live? Is that where you live? Yeah, we moved from America about three years ago. I was in America with my husband, but we we yeah. moved here. My parents are about 15 minutes up the road. What part? Um, having said that, I can't see them at the moment because we've got lockdown. You know, we can't go to anybody else's house. Yes. A another family. So, um, yeah, but we absolutely love it. If I turn my head to the left and look out at the balcony... All I see is the sea because we're on the promenade in Altea. I see the sea and the sky wow. and the beach. <laughs> Fantastic. That's great. That's amazing. I'm a bit I'm a bit further up than you, Karen. I'm in France near Dieppe. Yeah. So I, I can see the sea, but it's pretty miserable sea at the moment. <laughs> 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 I'll have to look down and see you guys one day. Uh, you know, come oh. down and everything's when this huge giant shitstorm of a virus has finally disappeared perhaps we can get down because uh, oh, that down, down, down that way yeah, yeah, yeah that's great, great. And how oh very wet lots of flooding. <laughs> lots of flooding yeah flipping heck it's it's oh it's have you seen any of it on the news some of the flooding yeah oh, yeah. yeah pretty grim pretty grim yeah i there was an area that's west of here called Carmarthen where we passed yesterday and it, it, the river was up two stories on a building there it was yeah, like right. they closed all the area I've never seen anything like it like we just had to look at it to believe it I could not believe what I was seeing right, uh, right. yeah they had it it's some bad areas have had it really bad really bad so yeah but Andy I was I was reminiscing with Karen about the 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 skate stage guy in the rigging. Or Shanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris. Uh, Karen, more Shanks, yeah. Yeah. Hey Karen, here's a here's a is a memory, here's a trip down memory lane for you now. Do you I remember in Manchester it was, right? We got up for breakfast we got up for breakfast and uh, I I threw you downstairs and he, and you said, Oh my god, some nutter was in the room above me with a flipping double bass or a cello or something. Do you remember? It was me, I bought one on trip, remember that? I had it on a bus to read, remember that? I was, it was you. Yeah, I was I was I was so drunk I was trying to play it in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I didn't did remember. You, did you cough up the truth? I have just now. Oh. <laughs> I did I did tell you the truth. I did I did admit to it because it was pretty it was giveaway then because I had to carry it around in the kitchen at the back of the bus for the rest oh. of the tour, if you remember. I remember because I got a photograph of you with it. You were playing the back yeah. of the bus. Yeah, I saw that. Have you seen that? Yeah. As a, I have, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. No, oh, that's good. That's good. Try and send it to you. Yeah, it's brilliant. Okay. Everyone's looking fairly knackered on the bus, apart from Andy playing his bass at the back. Yeah. Well, it was great because I used to sit in the kitchen at the back of the bus, and all of the fans that were following... I they, I could well, I'd be sitting there with the with the bass and they'd be I could see him behind us following it was it was hilarious. <laughs> you know, all the Numenites following behind it was great and they'd be yeah. watching him playing his bass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. How 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 did um because Chris you were already in the band and had toured a few times around the world, or, but you two it was your first tour with Newman, wasn't it? So. And my my second one that was for me. You are sorry? 
It was the second one for me. No, but I meant on the Berserker tour. All right, yeah. So how did that actually feel for yourselves? You know, suddenly you're in a, a newish band, I suppose, wasn't it, Chris? I suppose was had had. Well, uh, yes. Um, after John Warriors, after Warriors, Joe Hubbard left. Yeah, that's uh, it. We, we 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 had never never had a um, uh, a backing a live backing singer, so Karen was the first one to fulfil that role. And uh, I think on the Berserker tour, it's the first time John Webb joined me as a keyboard player. Um, so there was just uh, the sort of core group of myself and Cedric and Russell, and obviously Gary, with uh, in effect three new members. No, sorry, John played on the Warriors tour, but two new members being uh, Andy on bass and Karen on the backing vocals. Mm. So, yes, I mean, it wasn't a massive difference apart from losing Joe Hubbard and gaining Andy and Karen. Mm. Mm. Your loss. <laughs> oh, don't say that. I'm hoping to interview him soon. <laughs> <laughs> he's a bit worried about a backlash, so I don't know. I don't know what he's on about, but what? Mm. Um, so, yeah, so Karen and, and, and um, Andy, obviously, your first time on, on a Newman gig. Uh, back then still big crowds um how, how did that feel oh it's great great fun there's just walking out starting any of those big hits there is no better feeling than that when you uh, when the crowd know what song it is there's it could never sometimes you'd have a stinking cold but the minute you'd walk out on stage you'd spark up some of those big hits oh it's just took yeah. everything else stopped that you just it was just the greatest feeling. I still, for me, I'm very lucky when you play big hits with the artist that had the big the hit, there is no better feeling as an accompanist because that's as a bass player and accompanist. So it, there is no better thrill. And that was the first of the, you know, a big thrill that I had doing them. So, yes, it was great. It was great. Um, Gary's always had fantastic fans. Mm. Oh, they, so they were always really nice and really well behaved and as far as I was concerned anyway. Um, like I said earlier on, you know, I actually felt a little bit old at times because I was 31 and they, they all seemed really young to me. <laughs> <laughs> the band as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Karen. <laughs> Yeah, you you seem particularly young, Chris, at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, young, childish, immature, nothing's <laughs> changed. <there. laughs> oh, we did have some fun, didn't we? Oh, Especially we had some laughs. The, yeah. the drinks underneath the stage. Thanks, Bob. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, good. yeah good fun. You don't remember the lipstick trick I did with um, Dennis, do you, Karen? You mean being your lipstick? Do you remember? Do you remember no, that? I that. What did you do? Well, when I did a bass changeover, he'd be stuck there at the side with both bases, and I borrowed a lipstick. I think it was off you. And then I, because his hands were obviously holding both bases, he had no defense. So I would lipstick his face up, take the other base, and run on. Oh, oh, I, I, I don't, I, I'm going to join you back in a minute, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. I'm going to alert you. So I'm, I'm going to come back to you in a bit, all right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh. It's, me, it's me sitting here going like this because that phone. Oh, we got. Oh, Where's he gone? Is he gone? Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll be back. Uh, yeah. I, I love Andy. He's always something going on. Oh, he, he's got an incredible memory. He's telling me stuff that I'm just thinking to myself. How did you remember that? You know, I can I can barely remember last week. No, he's me. remembering <laughs> stuff. He's remembering stuff going back thirty-seven years. I'm it's glad great. it's not just me. <laughs> no, honestly, you're not the same. I'm terrible. Absolutely shocking. I mean, I don't know why Steve has me on because I mean, he's all asking me questions. And I'm going, and I'm rambling on, and I'm wrong. Yeah, <laughs> the wrong tour, the wrong album, <laughs> wrong country. You know. <laughs> uh, I'm okay because I can do a bit of research beforehand. I think I will from now on. <laughs> Stephen's the only one who knows what happened on those tours. <laughs> Well, I, I suppose maybe it was different for me because I was watching the tour rather than playing the tour. Yeah. You know, yeah. So you, you, but it was a long time ago. So, but you, you do remember certain elements of things, don't you? Yeah. And sometimes yeah. people jog your memory about things. So, that, but that's good. 
But what, um, Karen, what are you up to now? Um, musically, well, you, you were then saying a bit earlier you were doing something? Yeah, well, Steve's just come to sit down. <laughs> there he is. Hi, I don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Join the club. club. <laughs> 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 no, he can't be. He can't be much help, and and also he can't see very well, so he can't see you guys at all. Okay. Uh, so, well, we have been re recording. I when when I moved over in two thousand seven, um, I moved to Hollywood, and I married Steve there. And I really, I had been singing for like thirty eight years. Um, on some platform or another, be it big band sessions, pubs, on my own with my own couple of speakers and a backing track. I've done, I've done it all. And some jazz gigs that I did. Um, and I really, I fell totally head over heels in love with Steve. And when I got there, um, I, I wasn't bothered about singing anymore, to be honest, I'd had enough of it. And, not that I'd had a bad experience, but it was just enough. And um, I was quite happy to, to be his wife. And because his, the main part of his career was in the 70s, where he did a lot of, you know, he did the classic albums, then I, there, were, there are things that are ongoing that I could do to um, help, help his career stay alive, if you like, and help his name stay alive and remind people that he's still here. And, um, but that didn't go to plan because he has got me singing. He got me singing back then in, in Hollywood and everywhere that we, we moved a few times, um, moved to, to Arizona, then we moved to Na Nashville and then we moved back to Arizona. Um, so we are, we have been recording and, and He's done a couple of albums on his own and I do a little bit of backing vocals on that, um, which is great because he makes a lovely noise and it's always a pleasure to sing on anything he's produced. So, um, yeah, he's keeping me singing. I mean, I'm not doing anything live, of course. I've, I've retired from all, all that because um, I'm getting on a bit now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember if Chris is a, is older than me or not. Are hey, you hey, Steady, steady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, put it this way, Kat, I was born in the 50s. Yes, yeah, so was I. <laughs> I was born in 53. 57. <laughs> oh, I'm older than you. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you don't look it. And actually, I think we're doing pretty damn good. Listen, I'm now 64. I've just turned 64. But as a dear friend of me said the other day, you know, Chris, you look so good, you could get away with looking 63. So I <laughs> That'll do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So and anyway, um, yeah. Yeah, we've been doing cover songs. I mean, we've been locked up here on the promenade. We can go out to walk on the promenade, which is fantastic. Um, but I don't, I go and do the shopping because I'm obviously terrified that I'm gonna bring the COVID into Steve because he's, he's, he'll be 73 this year. Um, so we have to be really careful. So life hasn't changed that much for us because we don't socialize a lot. We keep ourselves to ourselves. Um, what we do is make music mm. and he, he makes he makes the music and I add any little bits of stuff I, I did co-write a song about three or four weeks ago um so that's in the pipeline um a, a, a new song an original song so yeah there's still um still life in the old dogs yet <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'll tell you something, Karen, I've picked up a, a couple of things that you and Steve have done that you posted, and uh, it is absolutely brilliant, and please continue, you know, Thank just carry you. on writing, it is great, and uh, I mean, Steve, Steve Roper, mm -hmm. I'm talking to you so I can make the difference between Steve and Steve, uh, you do know about Steve's background, don't you, Karen's husband, have you researched it? Yeah. Yeah, now he's played, I mean, I'm going to maybe embarrass Karen and Steve now, but... 
he's played one of the most amazing pieces of music. It just changed my life, and that was Salisbury Hill. Mm. Uh, guitar part on it. So, Miss, Mr. Steve, I'd like to shake your hand on that one. I know, you know, you've done a lot more than that, but I'm not being obsequious when I see, say this, but it is blindingly brilliant. So, love to meet you, and I'd love to do some work with you, both of you, and I mean that, really sincerely. Uh, that. But thank it's you. always a matter of time, isn't it? Matter of time, <laughs> and the fact that we live in different countries. But, hey, it might happen. <laughs> well, Chris is in France. He's, oh, not that, he's not that far away. No, that's not that far so, away at uh, all. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. I suppose he could be in a worse place, could he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be in Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. For a couple of corners. No, sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the good thing nowadays, though, with the invention of the internet, you can still do these things without actually being in the same room, can't you? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. Steve does. He's on two tracks of Alice Cooper's new album, which is about to come out next week. Really? <laughs> and uh, it's called uh, Detroit Stories. And it's all done from the studio. Whenever he's played on any of, uh, he was on Paranormal, the last album is called mm. <coughs> Paranormal. Yeah. And Welcome to My Nightmare. All of those were done remotely because we were in Spain. Well, Welcome to My Nightmare was done in Nashville. Oh, no, we did that one in Nashville. But, yeah. yeah, Paranoia, I did the overdubs, I did overdubs here. Yeah, and we just send the files. Uh, do, do you have your own studio, Karen? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh brilliant. It's yeah. a little, little... It's a little one. ...project studio, I call it, you know, but it gets the job done. Yeah, it's great. No, it's the same yeah. for me. <laughs> there you go, Chris. Yeah. You can feel a song in the main, making. <laughs> I'm, I'm writing it as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> but Chris, how is how is your book? Or have you have you? I've abandoned that. You have abandoned it. Oh, it? Well, of course I have. I can't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be the worst book ever. It'll be, it'll be factually wrong. Everything will be wrong about it. The dates, the times, the places, you know. And uh, what's the point? It's like, you know, I'll tell you this. I, I, if I hadn't been a musician, professional musician all my life, I would have been a historian. Apart from the fact, fact that I could never remember dates, events, or places. But, but so, you know, and, and, and that's the problem I had. That's why I never became a historian. And <laughs> that's another reason I'm not going to write a book. It's because I have a memory which is shot to bits. <laughs> yeah. I, I totally understand because yeah. I, I can't remember anything. I'm the worst. I warned Stephen about when, when he asked me to do this, I said, yeah, but... I have really bad concentration and I often, I can't think what word I'm trying to find. I can't remember people's names. <laughs> I hope it, you know, I'm hoping it's not Alzheimer's creeping in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, Chris, how's the bizarre stuff coming on? Oh, well, um, I, I'm not too sure. I keep sending stuff to uh, backing tracks to Rusty. And uh, I mean, you know, it's in um, Zane Griff is the singer. I don't know if you, do you know Zane Griff? Uh, yeah. yeah. No, he was, um, he's the singer in Bizarre, brilliant singer, absolutely amazing, and a lovely guy as well. And uh, I, I just don't really know at this stage what's happening to them. Rusty's getting hold of them and sort of arranging them. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff going on there. It's a bit complicated. And so I'm just waiting. I'm just going with the flow, you know, and uh, seeing how, uh, how, it, um, how, it, how, it, how it pans out. But certainly we do have a show. Um, in Belgium, the W Fest has been rescheduled for late August, but whether that'll go ahead or not, I don't know. Uh, so we'll just have to see. You know, at the moment, I'm just in contact with a really, really good guy I know in um, LA, and just I'm working with him at the moment on on another project, which I can't tell you about at the moment. <laughs> I'm sure, sure I know what it is, but I can't remember. But anyway, uh, well, yeah, your memory's as bad as mine. <laughs> I'm sure I do know, but I can't remember. So there's no point me actually mentioning it because I can't remember anyway. But um, but that's um brilliant. Um, if you can think of any funny moments on tour, uh, apart from the other obvious. <laughs> well, we we God bless her with Karen. We on that first Berserker tour. It wasn't so bad with Kit because, as Karen was saying, there was two two of them and. Uh, 
She did get the brunt of a few jokes, I think. From- <laughs> I <did. laughs> and uh, it, all, all, it was all lighthearted and stuff like that. But, you know, you know, you were a bit, you were kind of, I don't know, the brunt, of, not brunt of jokes, it's silly saying that. But I can't actually remember anything, but I remember there's a lot of laughter on the coach and uh, it was. piss taking and uh, all that sort of stuff. I seem to remember Gary was laughing at you a lot. I think it's great because when you were dancing, you had this dance like that. You were like, skiing. Was it a butt dance? <laughs> Is that the famous butt dance? Steve calls, my Steve calls that the butt dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. When I look at the videos, oh, my God. I think, what was I thinking? I, um, You know, the suit, the white suit on the Berserker tour. <laughs> And, and the jacket it was all, it was a man's white suit yeah that's right yeah and, and Beryl had to you know tie it up in the in the middle and everything and then oh my god I'm going to confess now I took the jacket off on part of that tour and I had a little white vesty thing on and it looked bloody awful and now I think oh my god this is what happens you do things in your youth and and <laughs> You have to live with it now. There's YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was funny. Chris, do you remember on the Berserker tour on the bus? I was sewing beads on my wedding dress. Yes. Do you remember that? True. Yes, indeed. On, on the bodice. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, and actually, I remember seeing that. I, see, I, I said to you that I, I, I either said to you or I thought it. I thought, hmm. That would make a better stage outfit. <laughs> <laughs> it would have, absolutely, had I finished it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. You're always sewing and reading books and uh, chatting yeah. about the rest of it and putting I, up with I, my crap. You know yeah. what? I'm still beading. I bead hats for Steve. Look. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, I bloody bead- well. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, like a koofy. It's called a koofy. Right. You probably know that anyway, but no, it's I like af- after the cat. Okay. So I'm still doing that. <laughs> <I> have one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, people that have asked for those hats, and I say, I, you know, it's like takes me about four or five months to make one. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. it's a lot of work. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so especially with uh, it's old Stephen there, his head there, it must be about, look at the size of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll cut out with that. <laughs> yeah, it, it would keep his head warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. Because I'm thinking, if I put my order in now, I should have it by the winter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Which would be, Which be good. But yeah. um, that's brilliant, guys. I think um, we've, we've done everything we need to do. Cool. Yeah, well, Andy's disappeared. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's probably got an air to fix again or something. I don't know. Um, Bye now. 